The Hilton Valley is full of amazingly evocative memories for me. Had wonderful, wonderful time. Not only with the railway itself, which we've seen here today, but also with the locos. Now, amazingly, Ben's managed to get some of the original engines back on the line. But this is the one that means the most to me. This is number six. Yep. And I was pulled behind this more times than I can remember. Yeah. But actually, it didn't look like this. No. Do you remember it with a steeple cab and uh, where the driver sat very high in it? Yeah. Well, in 1970, they rebodied it like this because it fell on its side a couple of times with no footwell for the driver. And now, well, in 1970, they, they installed that and made it a twin seat cockpit. So both whichever way the driver sits, it, it goes the right way. Um, which before, although it was a double-ended loco, the driver could only sit one way. And originally it was petrol mechanical, uh, and now, well, from 1970, it was petrol electric. Um, and what happened then, when the railway closed in 1979, um, because of the commercial operation required at Western Park, uh, Hilton Valley Railway Limited uh, installed a Lister twin-cylinder diesel and grafted it on the existing generator that, that um, was in the loco. And the loco still utilises the um, original control column and generator. Uh, ben, this is the one diesel that was original that I don't remember myself. This is number eight, I gather. Yes. Um, I, I never saw it. Tell me about it. Oh, right. Well, number eight arrived in 1970 with the main reason being Michael Lloyd had a bit of a rolling stock crisis. Number four's batteries needed renewing. And at the time, number six was being rebodied to, to its form that you see today. So Michael Lloyd had to act quickly to get an engine. And he certainly did. And this is the result. Um, Originally a ten and a quarter locomotive, it, it's from the dating from the 50s. Its early origins are unknown, but all we do know is it arrived at Hilton looking like this. And this is an engine uh, that we've, we've done the most with. It arrived from Sussex uh, and it was the first locomotive back and it's been rebuilt by us and is now seen in its original chocolate and cream livery that it was in and it still has its original single cylinder petter engine uh, often seen in dumper trucks um, with clutch gearbox the work so it's technically diesel mechanical i'm delighted with it as a kind of historical artifact but uh, i did have the uh, privilege of driving it a little bit earlier yeah and to be honest it does drive a little bit like a dump truck well. <laughs> it does Number four. Yeah. Now, uh, this is one of the original locos. It is, yes. Uh, however, again, I remember this in very much a different guise. For a start, it was green. Green, yes, with the straw yellow lining with the HVR. Yes, what happened with this was, again, in 1979, uh, when the railway moved to Western Park, it ran there for the first couple of years in its original form, but then was soon found to be slightly underpowered. So uh, the first operator of that line um, re-engineered it totally, kept the body and the bogies. Because she was a battery electric. That's she? right, battery electric with a Thrista controller, tram -like controller, twin seat cockpit. Um, very, very nice, quiet machine, roll down the track, you know. But this is, is really, it drives, sounds, smells different. But although the body and the bogies, in appearance, it sort of looks the same. But uh, now, of course, it's got a twin cylinder lister in again, and big hydraulics, and it's diesel hydraulic. And are there any plans to uh, change it back, or are we going to leave it as it no, is? No, um, Mike and I, we were having a chat about it uh, recently, and we're going to try and see if we can get it back to battery electric. Um, but uh, number five, the other locomotive, is, is a way being, being done to just that battery electric form. So we're learning with that, and we'll, we'll be able to use that knowledge in this. So again, in fact, what you're doing is trying to restore everything back to its original Hilton Valley condition. That's right, yes. We've also been looking at 
the coaches yes. uh, that you've got here, which are, of course, original. Yes, that's now, right. I mean, I remember those very well. Right. And the one thing that always amazed me about them is how stable they are. Because, of course, seven and a quarter normally uh, kind of can yeah. teeter a bit and, you know, derailments. That's section. right. But my recollection of those coaches were actually they were rock steady. Steady, yes. Well, the Hilton Valley led led the field in carriage design and it pioneered covered carriages and in the late 50s had what's thought to be the very first covered carriage on seven and a quarter inch gauge. And the models we've got here uh, that date from the early 70s are an evolution of that. And, you know, to get a covered carriage of that size running on seven and a quarter is quite something and also um, of course uh, Michael Lloyd he pioneered articulation uh, and bogies that could have got both um, vertical and horizontal movement you know, so. I've seen them and they're, they're beautifully engineered yeah. with swinging links and that's and right all sorts. very very nice examples and of course the underlying thing with those coaches and number six as well yeah um, low center of gravity that's it yeah and that that's what uh, yeah. keeps on the track that's it? it that that's really low foot wells for the passengers that's it although you've not actually been able to get some of the original steam locos yeah back yet not yet uh you do nonetheless have some resident steam locos yes we do indeed um running today uh we've had katie um half half size scale model of, of the original Fairborn Katie and luckily Aidan a friend of mine who's done a lot of work with the track and everything uh, he bought his visiting engine um, uh, bought his midge um, the Great Western Railway midge and uh, so we managed to run the two, two today there is also a garret as well commander which is in, in bits in the garage that's the one, a shelf project for, for, a, for another winter you know but hopefully uh, some of the original engines will at least get to visit in the future, if not become resident. Yes, that's right. You never know, as I say. I mean, who'd have guessed we got this far, you know. So you never know. Um, those numbers may see the right engines again, you know. Ben, I have to say, I'm really impressed with the whole setup. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it was an amazing railway to start with. Yeah. It started our railway life off. Yeah. Uh, it was sad when it died, but it is wonderful to see this phoenix <laughs> rising from the ashes. Yeah, it is. I'm, I love looking at the photos and then seeing it now. You know, that's, uh, it's given me a lot of pleasure so far, and I hope it will continue to do so. Mm -hmm.